Hello world, net and fancy, knife review time. Dudes, it's only February 2010 and my 2010 product guide from Spyderco is already getting thrashed. Pages ripped, torn, bent over. It's because I love reading their catalogs. They have great catalogs, don't they? I've said as much in my reviews previously. Love it, great creative concepts. They're true to the Spyderco vision and they transmit that to the customer. Really cool pictures showing and always reminding the world that the clip it design came from Spyderco. Excellent. I also think that's a true statement. That's not hype. Maybe you came away with that as well from my 2010 SHOT Show booth review with Spyderco there in Las Vegas. What a great time that was as we talked to Ed Shimp, Mr. Sal Glesser, Eric Glesser. Thank you very much for hosting the Nut and Fancy Project. Good times. Great blades too, dudes. You guys just do such good knives. I love them. Their quality level, like I've said many times, just as good as any, you know, production blades in the world. There's that wicked FB25 Warrior. Hard to find right now, but it'll become more available as production catches up. They do a great job of giving all the specifications, telling us some of the background philosophy and development of the blade. And there's the specifications. I don't think that's right, by the way. 3.4 ounces for a warrior. Misprint. Happens. Happens to the best of them. There's no way that's 3.5 ounces. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think that's a much heavier blade. But everything else, top notch in the Spyderco catalog. I'm going to use it to introduce a knife review, as sometimes I do. And it's going to be this one right here. The Manix 2. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because prior to seeing the Manix in uh, person, and I will say I'm not a Manix um, history guy. I Really, it was off my radar screen. I really didn't know much about the knife, about its history, about the previous introductions of the Manix. I never, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just missed it. Uh, I do tend to gravitate towards the high value designs. In other words, I'm very excited about blades that come around the $50 price point. You know, the Centafonte 3, great example. Of course, the Delicas, the Enduras. What a great blade that is, a C90 Stretch. Pretty much maxed that out in the review, didn't I? I've reviewed a lot of Spyderco blades at this point. Uh, I don't want this to be a catalog review, but I'm just using that by way of reference. That if I came across, let me get to it. You guys are probably going, oh, talk about that blade. Talk about this blade. I'll stay on topic. The Manix 2, if I came across that, I'd go, oh, yeah, it's a cool blade, but maybe not for me, nothing fancy. Why? Because it's no longer, in my opinion, at least this would be my initial take on it, um, that super high value. And I call super high value around the $50 point. Okay, more or less. Yeah, we can flex this. And actually, the Manix 2 is actually pretty darn affordable. It actually is a fairly high value knife. Uh, YourCornerStore.com, $72. Shut up. That's a lot of knife for the money, and I want to talk about that as the review progresses, of course, but not really digging the saber grind. Yes, I know I make exceptions for the Delica, the Enduras, but again, those are around the $50 price point, right? And they do cut very well. Sal makes the point that a hollow ground saber grind like that, if you're not going too deep into the material, is a, actually a very efficient grind. I will agree with that with my, from my own experience, by the way. Um, but honestly, looking at the knife, let's just talk about aesthetics right now. And again, this is just my data point. I, you know, maybe I just wasn't super turned on by it. I just go, oh, yeah, it's a cool knife, saber grind, ah, eh, not so much, you know. I don't know, it just didn't crank my wheel so much until I saw the knife in person. This sounds stupid, doesn't it? But I'm being totally real with you guys. You know that. And specifically, not the production Manix 2, which I think is an excellent blade. Uh, given my own, you know, my own uh, reservations notwithstanding. But how about this knife? The Sprint Run Blue G10 Manix 2 that you saw in the blue uh, in the booth review at Shot Show with Net and Fancy and Ed Shimp, and then Sal rolled in. Later, Eric rolled in. That's right. This is his brainchild right here. What a beautiful blade this is, and this is the blade we're going to review. Uh, maybe that one later, probably not because they're so similar. I'm going to concentrate on this Sprint Run Manix 2 Blue G10 limited to 500 pieces introduced 2010. 
Look at that blue handle. I said that in the booth review there, shot. Beautiful blue G10. I'm just so stoked about it. Uh, trying to hit all the details, the way I'm going to address it is the way that a lot of my viewers like. I'll adhere to it in this review. Talking points. The blues match too. That's kind of special, huh? More or less. I'll go down here, swap stuff around, forget stuff like I always do. Maybe get a few details wrong. Sorry, I do the best I can. Let's start it off. POU size and weight. I'm going to put this first and foremost in the category of co collectible blade. It's a sprint run, dudes. That means it's not going to be a production blade, at least in this iteration. This coloration, this type of steel, this type of grind, limited. So do you want to go out and buy a limited knife and then go out and thrash it? I wouldn't recommend it. There's too many other choices that are so affordable and from Spyderco that you can go out and thrash on. Okay. Should we go back in the catalog? I'd love to, just don't got time. Maybe later. Why thrash this blade? Keep it in your collection. Hand it down to your children. Again, knives are some of the best hand-me-downs in the world. Love them. Collectibles, my first POU on this blade. Secondarily, EDC blade. If you did want to use it, go ahead. Be a great EDC blade along the lines of the tenacious haul. Oh, also hanging out here in the wings by way of comparison because these knives really are kind of similar in POU, size, weight, a lot of things. Maybe we'll roll Mr. Tenacious back in here. Um, but yeah, EDC blade, you bet. For me, a little bit on the big side. I like my EDC blades to be just a little bit smaller. That's just me. Also, and lastly, tactical blade. This is a strong knife, guys. The Manix 2 is a very strong folding design, very strong lockup, which we'll discuss maybe a little bit more down here. Uh, I think it could serve very admirably in the emergency defensive role uh, for other reasons as well that we'll discuss in ergonomics. There's your POUs. Also, it is uh, a very reasonable weight. Okay, all together now, what's the weight that I usually like my uh, folding tactical blades to come in at? Everybody all at once. Four ounces, nothing fancy. You're crazy. All right, that's arbitrary. Yeah, four ounces. That's what I like to have my knives weigh or less if possible. And you know what I see? I see that trend coming together as of 2010. That's right. Who's laughing now? A lot of blades are coming in. at the. They're getting redesigned and lightened up so they come in around the four ounce mark. This is one of them. Yes, it is. This Manix 2 Blue G10 is 4.2 ounces. Outstanding job, Eric. Yeah, because it is a lot of strong blade for such a lightweight carry form factor. Uh, we'll talk about why. Actually, let me talk about it right now. One reason it's so light, look at that. Look inside. The heavily milled out liners. Great job. Great job. Now, you've got that uh, cage ball lock. You don't even really need the liners on this. This is not a liner lock. Okay? It's a cage ball lock mechanism. I'll discuss that here in a second. But look at that, how milled out those are. Very stoked about that. No excess metal on the inside. That's why it's so lightweight. Great job. And that makes it... I'm jumping ahead. I know I can't help myself. Ergonomics. It makes it so fast in hand. It's a well-balanced blade. Getting back to what I said in the intro, on pictures, you may not be stoked about the Manix 2. If you can, get a hold of one. Handle it and, and then uh, come back in the comments and talk to fellow team peers and tell them what you think, man. I tell you what, in hand, it's, it is a revelation. That's kind of a big word, but oh well. Steel is improved over the normal Manix. Normally it's 154 cm, which I still think is an outstanding steel. By the way, was that not an interesting discussion with Ed Shimp in the SHOT Show vid by Nothing Fancy uh, when we talked about steels, specifically about the composite particle metallurgy process? Interesting. Loved it. He made the point there that there's actually a CPM, 154 cm that also uses those micro ingots, I can't speak, that are induction forged, and they're able to go again uh, above that typical 1.5% vanadium for extra toughness versus, uh, I don't know, the Bessemer or smelted steel process. Yeah, it was technical, but to me, I found it fascinating. 
I still think the 154CM uh, version of the Max 2 would be very serviceable. No problems at all. Um, and But for me, I'll take the S30V. Thank you very much. CPM variety. That's right. A product of that uh, particle metallurgy process that we just talked about. Good edge retention. Good rust resistance. All the things we've talked about in lots of reviews. I love S30V. It is a darling child for a reason. It wears well. Are there other steels that are better? Yeah, probably. It just depends on what you want to do with your steels. But I think for most of us knife guys that just use our blades, want to be able to resharpen it, don't want it to rust out from under us, I think CPM S30V. Pretty awesome. Great steel choice on this uh, Sprint Run Manix. Blade shape, outstanding. Let's go back to the regular Manix by way of contrast. I'm going to go to the catalog. What is it? Page 22. I'd love to talk about all these blades, but this review will be like two hours long. I'm not super digging, and if I said this before, I'm sorry I forgot because I did a retake. I'm not super digging the Saber grind on it. Uh, yeah, I think I did say that. I love the full flat grind on this version. Love it. I've said that in so many reviews. I'm just stoked about it. It's such a great slicing blade. Um, yeah, the hollow ground saber variety of the Manix 2 will do good cutting as well. Very serviceable. Given a preference, you're looking at it right here. Okay, here comes Tenacious by way of contrast. What a great blade that is, by the way. Go look at my review. Spider Co. Tenacious also have its little brother, the Persistence a review out there. Very positive. Look how similar the blade shapes are. It's that Spider Co. Leaf design. Both of them are full flat ground. Completely different steels. Yes, 18 or 8 CR 13 MOV on the bottom. S30V top. Very similar. I love the blade shapes. Maybe for some cutting tasks, they're a little bit too broad. Um, but man, what shearing potential that blade has with a full flat grind on it. Incidentally, this Manix 2 Blue G10, it comes extremely sharp. Notice that relief edge too. There is some difference between them. The Tenacious on the bottom, kind of a very short relief edge. And look at how gradual the approach is on the Manix 2. HD doing a good job catch, capturing that. Yeah. This thing is freaking razor sharp, dudes. Be careful. I'm not even kidding you with that. Great blade shape, though. We've seen it before. We've talked about it with this knife. Very serviceable. For most of your cutting tasks, I think you will love it. Absolutely. The speed of the Manix 2 is outstanding. Very smooth. Very well-balanced action to bring it out of the handle. No problems at all. Simple and fast deployment. Just like that. Lock up, outstanding too. Absolutely no movement up, down, side to side, laterally, whatever direction you want to try to take the blade, it don't go because it's a solid lock up. Um, oh, by the way, back to speed though. It comes out of the handle nicely, but it has that very hard to, uh, um, for some manufacturers, very hard to achieve perfect balance of handle retention. In other words, you don't want too much, you don't want too little, but you you do want it to retain in the handle so it doesn't shake out. Huh, let's bring the Tenacious back here because it's a culprit of this. That's right, it will shake out of the handle. They have improved it with latest the later Tenacious versions, but you remember how I totally cut my hand? <laughs> That's right, That's Tenacious that did that because of that. It was in the upside down orientation, it shook out of the handle, I reached in to grab something, it was like that, and I got cut. You won't have that problem with the Manix 2. This version, at least, it perfect handle retention. Not too much, not too little, and yet we still are able to affect that beautiful speed of deployment. Again, autos really aren't necessary when you have such a well-balanced blade like this. The strength. These is, this is going to go up uh, with lockup as well. I mentioned briefly the cage ball lock there that you see on the side. Very strong lockup mechanism is my understanding. Ed Shimp says it wears into that tapered groove in the back of the blade. So it's a self-adjusting lockup mechanism. This isn't plastic, that's polymer. And don't get me started about how great polymers are because they are Glock, XD, MMP. Polymers rock, guys. Uh, and I think that's probably the best material choice for that. Some guys may have issue with that. Well, I don't like plastic. Well, it's not plastic, it's polymer. There's really different things. And it wears, or it actually contains that ball bearing 
that goes in the back of that blade spine that affects lockup. It's a strong lockup. Not really an axis lock, okay? Some guys will say, well, that's just like a Benchmade axis lock. Not really, okay? Different in function. I guess the end result is very similar. Great lockup, though, like we talked about, very solid. Downside is you may have some trouble, um, you know, retracting the blade one hand because it is a very strong spring, and I wouldn't change anything about that either. I like that it's a very strong spring. Downside is with a single thumb like that to retract the ball uh, mechanism and affect, you know, blade folding, very, very tough. You're probably going to need two fingers, two hands. It's very easy just like that. You can do it one hand. Be careful though because once you extract that ball bearing from the back of the blade, it just rides loosely in the handle and so it can fall on your fingers like so if you're just doing it one hand. See this? That's what I'm talking about. So be careful. I think two hands is probably your best bet. That might be a minor downside with some dudes about that. They don't like it. That Maybe like a Benchmade Axis Lock. You can actuate it one hand, no problem. I still love the Axis Lock. Yes, I do. Um, that is a strong lock though. The cage ball lock, excellent. Have no problems that it's riding in that clear polymer either. That's just me. Handle material, perfect blue G10. I've shown you on camera several types of G10, haven't I? There's different grades, or diff there's different quality levels. Huh, pretty much like everything in life. This, I would think, would be one of the upper quality levels. Why? Because it has good traction on it. It's textured, you know, properly in that gorgeous blue color. Very appropriate for a Spyderco Sprint run. I love it. I really do. The G10 has always been a favorite handle material of, of mine. And when you put it in a color like this and you get it right, in the radius scene, notice there's no sharp corners. The ergonomics on the handle are just excellent. I'm talking about the G10 here. I love it. And then, like Ed Shimp talked to us uh, in the booth review on this blade, proud liners. I hadn't really heard it called that. Proud liners meaning that it extends beyond the G10 handle scales, the jimping. I don't know if I'd really classify this as jimping. I guess you could. To me, it's more stylistic than anything because it really, for me, doesn't lock my thumb in really hard. Um, but let's talk about this. This does. You want to talk about, there's so many things that the Manix 2 Blue G10 gets right, and one of them is jimping. Have you heard nothing fancy talk about jimping? Yeah, lots. Super sharp, defined jimping on the upper spine. Look at, there's the Eric Glesser logo right there. That's wicked cool. This is made in Golden, Colorado, by the way, 100% U.S. made. And on the bottom choil and on the top, you can totally lock in on the Manix 2. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. This is a knife that gets jimping right. Spyderco often does. Back to the Tenacious. Great job jimping on that, generally speaking. Although it's a very short run, like I said in my review. And that's not too helpful. But it's there. This blows it away in terms of controllability on this blade. Gloved hands, yeah, you'll be able to really control this. Some guys will think, well, that adds a lot too, doesn't it? Like I said, I think this is mostly aesthetic, a little bit, not too bad. It doesn't bother me aesthetically. I think some guys might not dig the proud liners. Uh, not me, I like it. This is functional too right here, this jumping. So you wanna go behind the guard, in front. Either way, you can lock in. Great job on the handle material and on the execution of jimping for the Manix 2. Great handle material and a lot of what I just said plays into the talking point of ergonomics. It is a knife that feels outstanding in hand. Okay, it's well balanced. Again, you may not be able to gather that from pictures. Granted, this is the regular Manix 2, but very similar in lots of ways. Oh, one way it is different, this is a heavier knife. Okay, 5.15 ounces for this, 4.2. Again, this has those heavily milled out liners. Great job, love it. Ergonomically speaking though, a home run. Look at those finger grooves right there. In the forward grip, you can lock in, again, getting back to the jimping, the thumb ramp, excellent controllability, perhaps needed in the emergency tactical roll. Reverse grip, if that's the way you wanna go with the blade, also possible. Great ergonomics, which, kind of leads us to talk about the clip as well, right? Thankfully, it's tip-up carry. Some of you guys hate that. I don't. I love it. As a right-hander, 
I find that as I extract the blade from pocket, a regular Spyderco blade like this, deploy it, it's just quicker for me when it's tip up. I know not everybody's like that. Uh, for me, it works great though. 14 millimeter deployment hole, very quick, large enough that probably would accept some gloves there as well. Probably not winter gloves. I didn't really try that, but I think they would. Great clip too. In this motif, the blue and silver plays well, don't you think? Plays well. I've seen that uh, regular Manix too, and I think that would probably look best with black and hardware. Black and screws, black and clip, I think it has silver screws, silver clip. On this version though, excellent. That's a typical Spyderco clip, well polished, ultra strong. Look at those screws that attach there. We're talking about the strength of the Manix too, dudes, right? You see it right there. You see them go all the way through that liner. Full length screws. You can reverse it for left and right carry if you want. Look at that lanyard hole. That's a big lanyard hole, man. You aren't going to have any problems threading your whatever lanyard you want back there. It'll work. While we're back here, let's look at that back design. Partial pillar design. Kind of open, open back, and I love it. Best I can gather, I'm going to use the Tenacious as a pointer. This is bead blasted stainless steel, this backspacer right here. And then it's open here. I love the design. Flow through, mud, whatever you got going, blood, guts, it'll flow through there, wash it out, keep it clean. Look at the centering in the handle. This is a quality blade. You should probably be getting that by now in this review. Again, I'm doing my best to transmit that to you through the medium of video. You need to handle one to understand it. I love the clip design. I think it carries low enough in the pocket because of the cage ball lock. Uh, you know, they probably could make it a reversible clip design as Spyderco often does with great effect, I might add. I love how Spyderco does that. I've said that in many reviews. They give the user all kinds of options. Great clip design. No uh, Wizard of Oz issues there. In other words, big goofy clips are going to catch on something and get bent. Not at all. Look at that liner. I love that. It's, it's not drilled, it's milled. They took every bit of steel out of that they could without doing anything to lessen the strength. That leads to durability. I think the Manix 2 Blue G10, very durable blade. Uh, honestly, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. The choice of materials is just outstanding. S30V steel, perfect, perfect. I forgot to show you this. Tip strength, I think, is excellent in the Manix 2. Uh, tapers down nicely, but it more of a reinforced tip than you would expect in this. Full flat grinding, G10, getting back to the durability. Uh, excellent pocket clip, stainless steel throughout. Uh, relatively strong knife, I will say. Really is, especially at 4.2 ounces. I think its strength supersedes its weight. I think uh, you'll be hard pressed to wear it out in your lifetime, unless you're just some doing something dumb with it. Uh, you know, abusing the knife, which is always possible. Or, let me say this, perhaps if you're doing some heavy-duty cutting chores, you could wear that blade out. I say reach for another knife. Don't go destroy this beautiful blue G10 knife. That's just me. There's so many other knife options. You know, go go wear out a Tenacious. That's what I do. These are much more affordable. You know, you won't feel guilty about thrashing it. Value, this knife, if you want it, order it now. There's only 500 of them, dudes, these blue G10s. They're going to go fast. If you haven't got your order in, do it now. Uh, I don't know when they're going to be shipping, but worth it. About $127, I think. I know. I hate to say prices exactly. That's at yourcornerstore.com. A little bit more, a little bit less. Some other websites will have them. They may be accepting pre-orders. If you dig it, I would get in line right now. Love this blade. So value, I will say, is very high because of what it is. It is a collectible Spyderco with the absolute uh, best materials. And this is uh, in the lineage of the Manix knives. You Manix fans know what I'm talking about. This is one of them. Of all the lessons that they've learned as the line has progressed, maybe some very or things they found out they could have done better, my understanding is they're incorporated into this design. And this is the latest and greatest Manix lineage blade. Ultra cool. Need I say more? Look at the color. Love it. Silver against the blue. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The cool factor, the second type of cool you will achieve with a Manix um, blue G10 sprint run blade is off the charts for what you're getting. Again, some guys will say, well, that's way too much for a blade. 
Well, not for a lot of guys. I will tell you right now, these blades are going to sell out very, very quickly. A lot of Manix fans have been waiting for this alone. The full flat grinding of the blade. Razor sharp, outstanding lining, excuse me, liner milling, partial, partial pillar construction, cage ball lock, tip up carry, super tight, the blade centered. It goes on and on. Excellent blade retention, fast deployment. I could just keep on blabbering, dudes. There's no downsides that I can detect to this knife, other than it's going to be limited. Eric, you did a great job on this blade, dude. And speaking of Eric, we're going to end our review by going back to the 2010 SHOT Show. Nut and fancy Eric Glesser as he discusses his passion, the Manix 2. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. That's a blade review, and we're going to end it with Mr. Glesser talking about his creation. See ya. Stuff out of your way here. Hey Ed, I was going to leave the Spider Co booth, but another interesting conversation ensued. We were talking about, and this is Eric Glesser, son of Sal, who Mr. Ed Shimp himself was just talking very highly of. This is a designer in his own right. Another reason I'm doing this addendum video to the Spider Co booth, shot 2010, nothing fancy, is because, dude, this is your knife, right? This, it is my design. Excellent. And look at this. I just learned this and I want to tell you about it. Huh. I'll use my barong as a pointer here. What's that tag, Eric? Uh, that's a little symbol that I put on some of my favorite designs that those who know know that I worked on it. Excellent. So, Manix fan. And the Manix 2. This is a knife <laughs> I've been evolving for many years. Uh, the ergonomics are very good. Uh, they've been refined for years. It's got a very interesting jimping and grip throughout the knife. Yep, we were it's talking about that. It's got a ball bearing lock, so it's very strong with tremendously good action. It's great strength in the lock, self-adjusting lock. Um, we make it in Golden, Colorado uh, at a very good price point uh, because of some of the processes that we were able to do. And for bang for the buck, it's one of the greatest knives in the market today, I'd have to say. Uh, pricey on that and uh, I think we mentioned earlier but just again this particular one is a blue G10 love a, that blue yeah this love is it. a CPMS 30 V full flat blue G10 skeletonized beautiful liners. blue I love it uh, this one will be more expensive than our traditional model we sell with a black G10 and a hollow grind our uh, black G10 hollow ground model we sell with a 135 MSRP uh, this one I don't remember the MSRP on it because it's it's quite new and it's not out on the market that's a sprint run too isn't it it'll Eric? be a limited sprint run of 500 pieces and I think I heard and I actually saw how you doing skeletonized liners in that bad boy and by way of reference Eric that I just push that all the time anytime I do not see skeleton skeletonized liners I really don't see why well, we wouldn't do that except a cost issue maybe well there's one other issue the other one doesn't have skeletonized liners because people say that it can get dirty and like clean, lint in yeah, there and cleaning out the skeletonized liners in some environments can be very difficult so with there's this, this one, new thing it's called compressed air <laughs> <laughs> so it really depends what environment you're going to be using. Uh, this one has skeletonized liners because most of the people that will be buying this knife won't be using it in the type of environments that will be. Yeah, so different dirty. strokes for different folks. Exactly. Um, for me, I'm always like this knife, this Manix 2 dudes, lightweight. Uh, let me see. I don't have my scale with me. I'm going to say 4.6. Oh, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> but after we put the full flat grind in and the skeletonizing, it's about a third less than the other. A third less. A third less. Uh, About a third less, if I remember correctly. Thanks for coming over, Ed. It's great talking. We're going to keep going. Uh, Ed, you were talking about uh, what was that motto of Spider Co? Uh, well, we're, we're reliable, high performance, but I think what he was talking about is we're always shooting for a fine line. No more than necessary, no less than perfect. That's it. It's a hard goal to make. That's what I like. No more than ne necessary, and then uh, what was the last part? No I less than perfect. No less than perfect. It's a hard one to get to. Awesome. Uh, quality is, is outstanding. And then Ed and I, and also uh, Sal, I, I screwed up my camera. I apologize. I think I accidentally turned off, but we're talking about the passion of knife making. The we passion. We have a passion for the knives. You know, what new can you do a knife? You can always do something. You can new always knife. do something. And there's a lot to go. And guys that have the passion for knives are going to be watching these videos. And uh, everybody I've met here in the Spider Co. booth, obviously you, Eric, Mr. Ed, 
have it in spades uh, because it results, and I said this off camera, in a product like this. I'm being serious. I'm not. I'm not joshing you guys. You guys know I give it to you straight. But a knife that results with a quality level, the value level, because I think, like you say, the pricing on, on pretty much most Spyderco products is in the ballpark for what you're getting. A lot of bang for the buck. A lot of bang for the buck. A result of passion. Uh, and by the way, the Nut and Fancy Project, same thing. This is a passion of mine. Knives, flashlights, guns, and that's why I can talk off the cuff without script. That's why Eric can talk and design knives. The Ed can talk and do that. Anything to add on that? No, I just think this is the best company. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. We get along great. We're a whole team that's rowing together and we're trying to get to the finish line first. Right on. Cool. Cool. Well, that's just going to be a short addendum. Uh, really, I could spend all day at the Spider Co. booth talking philosophy. There's several other designers that came by that we didn't have a chance to talk to. Uh, Ed was pointing them out. Um, uh, but maybe uh, in future days we'll be able to do that. Maybe come to the facility and talk to you guys direct with the Net and Fancy project. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. That's Eric Lesser. Ed Shimp shaking his hands again. Uh, and it is a pleasure. Net and Fancy out.